So you've just found a CD with a great rate at a bank you've never heard of. But is it safe? That's a question that's been thrown our way a lot recently as CD rates inch higher and higher. And that's what we'll be covering today. Are CDs from GSIBs safer than CDs from non-GSIBs? How might one decide between a CD from a GSIB versus one from a non-GSIB in this context? Hello, Super Saver. I hope you're having a good week. As usual, before we dive in, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. If you're completely new to us, GSIBs are global systemically important banks, some of the largest and most influential banks out there, and what we personally consider to be among the safest banks in the world. As a reminder, these are the three reasons why we feel GSIBs are safer than non-GSIBs, especially in times of crisis. GSIBs have significant government backing, even more government backing than just FDIC insurance. The eight GSIBs in our country are the banks that our government will do everything they can for as long as they can to keep them from going under. The reason being that if one of these banks fails, it may draw the entire banking system into the next global financial crisis and the real economy with it. And no one really wants that. GSIBs are also subject to stricter regulation. For example, they're required to have more capital and liquidity on hand than non-GSIBs. They're also subject to higher supervisory expectations, such as how they manage risk, governance, and internal controls. And risk management, governance, and internal controls in the current market environment are even more complex and important given the uncertainty around inflation, a potential recession, and the pace and direction of future interest rate hikes. I've linked this GSIBs 101 video in the description below for those of you who want more details. So it's because of these three reasons right here that we feel GSIBs and the CDs that they issue are safer than non-GSIBs and the CDs that they issue. Because even though we know that our bank deposits are FDIC insured, so long as we stay within the standard deposit insurance coverage limit of $250,000 per depositor, per FDIC insured bank, per ownership category, and even though the FDIC has covered all depositors in all three bank failures that have happened so far this year, even those that were above the FDIC's $250,000 threshold, having our money in a GSIB just gives us an additional layer of protection, the second line of protection, security, and peace of mind that we need to be able to sleep well at night. But that's us, our financial journey. And everyone's financial journey is different. So let's exchange some views and perspectives with you and the other super savers and members in our community. So back to the frequently asked question from the beginning of this video that you guys have posed to us. I've just found a CD with a great rate at a bank that I've never heard of. Is it safe? There are a number of ways to assess the safety and profitability of banks. And these methods can get quite complicated, as we talked about in this previous video on the collapse of First Republic Bank, also linked below. But that's why we have FDIC insurance, so that we, normal folks, don't have to dive deep into our bank's financial statements and assess and try to predict whether they will go bust anytime soon. Many fine minds in large banks and credit rating agencies get paid handsome amounts of money to do just that, to do deep dives into the financial health of banks. But frankly speaking, their record is mixed. That's me being polite here. And by the way, if your bank is small and or private, you may not even be able to get your hands on their financial statements. And that's where FDIC comes in. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation is essential our first line of protection against a bank failure. And in my mind, it's the most important thing we can do to make sure that our money is safe when we do business with a bank. Make sure that everything is FDIC insured. Remember, as I stated earlier, that the standard deposit insurance coverage limit is $250,000 per depositor per FDIC insured bank per ownership category. If you're lucky enough to have more than that with your bank, first, congratulations. 
Second, be sure to check out this FDIC 101 video for ways to increase your FDIC coverage amount so that you don't exceed their maximum threshold, as well as to understand how FDIC insurance works in general. So in my mind, the real question you should ask yourself when choosing whether or not to buy a CD from a particular bank or to do other types of business with them for that matter is this. How many lines of protection do I need for my cash? What do I need to feel safe with this financial institution? For many folks, this first line of protection, FDIC insurance, if it's a bank we're talking about, or NCUA insurance, if it's a credit union we're talking about, is enough. Others, though, may need more than this first line of protection that FDIC and NCUA insurance offers them. We may exceed the FDIC and NCUA insurance limits, or we may need or just want a second line of protection because it simply allows us to sleep better at night or because it helps us function a bit more worry-free during the day. There are many good reasons why an individual may want to have a second line of protection. And in our case, from our perspective, that second line of protection is GSIP status, as already discussed, which brings along with it all these GSIP benefits that we talked about earlier in this video. Unfortunately, GSIP status also brings with it GSIP non-benefits. You could call them disadvantages that we need to accept as a trade-off for banking with a GSIP, such as, generally speaking, lower rates on checking, savings, and other deposit products, like CDs. Higher minimum balances and fees. Less personalized and or friendly customer service. Longer wait times on the phone. And not being able to do practically everything online. So every time I want to open a new account with JP Morgan Chase, I have to make an appointment and go into a physical branch with all my paperwork. And sometimes our relationship manager is running on time and other times she's not. And I have to sit and wait and wait. And the coffee isn't always great either. You get the picture. The thing is, all these non-benefits, these disadvantages that come with a GSIB, they're annoying, sometimes very annoying. But in our case, we don't really care about this or this or any of these for that matter. I mean, they are nice to haves, but they're not must haves. And most of our money is invested within our Fidelity accounts. So these lower rates don't bother us all too much. What we value our must have in a bank after FDIC insurance, our second line of protection is JP Morgan Chase's GSIP status and the better balance sheet and profitability that comes with it so that all else being equal, they can hopefully better weather the next financial storm than their non-GSIP counterparts. Now, going back to the original frequently asked question about CD safety that's been top of mind for some of you, I've just found a CD with a great rate at a bank I've never heard of. Is it safe? My answer is go through these lines of protection. Is knowing that your bank is FDIC insured or that your credit union is NCUA insured enough for you. If it is, then that CD that you're considering purchasing is safe based on your individual circumstances and preferences so long as it's from a financial institution that's FDIC insured or NCUA insured and you stay within those deposit insurance limits. If you find that you're exceeding the insurance limits, or that you're still tossing and turning at night despite staying within the insurance limits or worrying about it during the day despite knowing that FDIC insurance or NCOA insurance is there to protect you, then you might seriously want to consider a second line of protection and purchase your CD or move your cash to a GSIB, even though that GSIB may pay lower rates, have higher minimums and or fees, etc., etc. So as to maintain your personal peace of mind during your sleeping and waking hours, as with all things to do with money, there is no one size fits all solution. For those of you who are ready to explore the top CD rates that are out there right now, check out our latest video here on the top rates for 12 to 60 month CDs. And for the more adventurous amongst you who are looking to explore slightly higher return, but also slightly higher risk, fixed income investments, check out these latest members only videos for a deeper dive into what I personally view as an almost generational opportunity in the world of bonds. 
and pencil in our first live members Q&A in a few weeks time. Click on this join button on our channel page or the join link in the video description below for more details. All right, Super Saver, as always, I hope this video was helpful and that you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to share with those you care about and hit that thumbs up and see you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.